Hi everyone and welcome to Brush and Bubbles. Today we are going to be going through another painting tutorial. I hope that you're all well and that you're finding the tutorials nice and relaxing and calming and you're unleashing your creative side. Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing a sort of art deco style poster of Miami. I absolutely love the Art Deco era and this is a really fun one to paint. We're going to be using lots of pastel shades. So, let's get started. What you're going to need for this painting is just to cover up your table with some tablecloth or old newspaper just to protect it. You'll need a canvas. This is an 8x10 canvas. A palette to pop all of your paints in. A couple of different size brushes. I've got a medium one and a small one. Some kitchen towel a cup of water and then your acrylic paints. I'll be showing you which paints I'm using as we get started, but like I mentioned, I'm gonna be going for a really pastel-like palette with my painting. You can use whichever shades that you like. I would also just go grab yourself a drink of choice. I think we all deserve it. For this painting, I've got two dishes of white paint, some green, yellow, pink, purple, blue, and black. If you haven't got any pink, you can just mix that up using some white and red. What we're gonna do to start with is just mix up a really light blue color. And all we're gonna do with this very, very light blue is just draw in where we want our background to go. So we're gonna use lots of block shapes for this um, to keep it in that sort of art deco style poster print painting. So what I would do is just pick up your small brush and we're just gonna mix up a very light blue using some white paint and the tiniest, tiniest bit of blue. Give it a good mix. Once you've mixed up your blue, I would just add a drop of water to it because it helps thin out the paint as we sketch, just mix it in there. What we're then gonna do is just decide on your canvas where you want your buildings to go. So I'm gonna do two buildings on the bottom right and left. So I'm just gonna draw them in now. And essentially, these are just very easy shapes. They're, they're rectangles, basically, just squares and rectangles. So I'm just going to draw on my first building here, just with a light touch using this blue paint. And I'm gonna just draw in a sort of, almost like a step-like shape for this building. Now we're going to move on to my next building and I might have this one slightly higher but using the same formula so just drawing in those shapes. I've also just wrapped the buildings around the side and underneath. What we're going to do now is with the same shade we're just going to draw in where our horizon line is. So this is going to be the C where the sky meets the sea. So I'm just gonna draw that in at about here all the way across. And I'm not gonna overlap my buildings because the sea is behind the buildings and the buildings are in the foreground. So just draw a line from building to building. Once you are happy with this, do not worry if your buildings look a little bit wonky because we're gonna be going over them. But I would just wash off your little brush we're now gonna move on to the colors for our sky. So I'm gonna go for a sort of pale pastel minty green shade. So for this, I'm gonna mix it up with my medium brush. And to start with, I'm gonna start with a large amount of white as my base. We want to make sure we're mixing up enough paint to cover that whole top section of sky. So I've got all the white and I'm gonna start adding a little bit of green to it. Once you're happy with the shade for your sky colour, you can just go on and add this to the whole top section of your sky. So I would be quite gentle with your brush strokes. We want to make it look nice and smooth. So you might want to add a little bit of water to your paint and then just get that all in there. Just be a little bit more careful as you fill in this section of your canvas where your buildings and your horizon line is. Once you've filled in your sky, we're now going to move over to our C colour. So I'm just going to wash off my medium brush. So for my C colour, I just want to mix up a nice light pastel blue shade. So again, I'm going to start with some white as my base. 
And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue and mix it up until I'm happy with the colour. Once you're happy with the colour for your C, you can go ahead and fill that all in as well. Again, we just want to be careful as we're going towards the buildings. Just make sure you're not overlapping them. Once you're happy with your C, we're now going to move on to our buildings. Now, the nice thing about doing the buildings last is that we can overlap it slightly with our background. If you want to make your buildings a bit bigger or bring them in a little bit more towards the centre of the canvas, you can do that. And what I would do is just decide which paintbrush you want to use. You might want to do a little dance between the both of them, so I'd give them both a good wash. So for my first building, I'm going to go for a nice pale pink colour. So I'm just going to start with white as my base and I'm just going to add a little bit of pink to it. If you don't have pink uh, paint, you can just make the same pink by mixing up red and white together. So I'd have more white than red. But I'm just going to give this a good mix until I'm happy with the shade. Once you're happy with the shade for your first building, we can then go in and fill that in just using whichever brush you feel you would like to. So I'm going to go in with my bigger one first and then I might use my smaller one to get into the nooks and crannies. And what you can do is just start with sort of the sides and the base first and maybe the corners, the edges and the, the bottom part of the canvas. And then as your sky and sea get a little bit more dry, you can then go in and sort of overlap it and make it nice and crisp. So once you've filled in your first building, you can now go ahead and make the colour that you want to do your next building in. So I'm going to do mine in a very pale purple sort of lilac colour. So all I'm going to do for this is with my medium brush is just pick up some white and then I'm going to add a tiny bit of purple to it. And if you haven't got purple, you can just mix some purple up using red and blue. Once you're happy with your shade, you can just go ahead and fill that in exactly like we did with our first building. Once you've got your next building in there, we're just going to give our big brush a wash. Essentially, we're just going to draw in a circle shape right in the middle just for our sun. Now, I would start smaller and then gradually make it bigger. Otherwise, you can just end up with a humongous sun and you might not want a humongous sun. So for this, I'm just going to mix up a really pale yellow. So I'm going to start with a lot of white as my base, and then I'm just going to gradually add the yellow and mix it up with my medium brush and just start drawing on a small circle, sort of at the lower part of the sky, but we don't want it to come down over the sea. So I'm just going to start slowly, like I said before, and start smaller. And I'm actually just pushing the bristles down of my medium brush and twisting the handle and it just sort of helps get the paint on there in a sort of circle-like way. So I've done a couple of layers of my sun and now I just want to leave it to dry nicely before moving on to the palm trees. So I want to make a really light grey to do my palm trees but you can choose any colour or shade that you like and we're just going to use our small brush. So, so to start with I'm just going to mix up my shade so I'm just going to use the white that I've got left in here and I'm just going to gradually start adding a tiny tiny bit of black into it and giving it a good mix. Once you're happy with the shade of your palm trees, we want to add a few drops of water to the paint. This basically makes the paint a little bit more fluid and it's a lot easier to draw nice crisp lines with it. So we just want to add in that water and give it a really good mix. The next thing we're going to do is prepare our brush. So I've got loads of paint on my brush. I'm just going to find a spare bit of plate push the bristles down on the brush and I'm going to twist the handle and sort of drag it along and it should bring the brush to a nice peak. 
Alternatively, you can just sort of manipulate the bristles of the brush on your palette by just pushing them down and then getting rid of any excess paint. And it should bring it to a nice sort of shape for you to go in and do your palm trees with. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how to do two palm trees and I'm going to have them coming up from right at the base of the canvas and overlapping the buildings and the sea and the sky and some of the sun. So it's up to you. You might want to do loads of palm trees all along the bottom or you might just want to do one. But I'm going to show you how to do them and then you can decide. To start with, all we want to do with our small brush is draw the trunk of the palm tree. Now, the great thing about palm trees is the trunks aren't straight, they're nice and wobbly, they go in all shapes, even sometimes they curve right over. So you can do whatever you like with the shape of your palm. In Miami, like typically, they're quite tall. Um, same with LA, they have really lovely tall palm trees. So I'm gonna do two tall ones on my painting. I'm gonna bring the first one up from about just in front of the pink building. I'm just gonna draw a line all the way up, remembering that we're adding in the leaves at the very top as well. So I might bring mine to about there. And we want the base to be slightly wider than the top. So you can just slowly go back in, fill it out, thicken it out, but essentially they are quite thin. So don't thicken them out too much. So the great thing about palm leaves is they stick up straight, they go to the side, they bend over. So we just want to have four, five or six palm leaves in there, depending on what you want to do. So I like to map mine out first. So I'm going to leave a slight gap between the trunk and the first leaf. And I'm just going to draw my first stem. So my leaves will come out around that. And then I'm going to do my next one, which is going to curve around slightly more. And I'm hardly pushing down on the brush and I've prepared the bristles as well. And then the next one might curve down a little bit more. And then I'm going to do this side exactly the same. Once you've mapped out your palm tree, we're now going to fill in all of the leaves. So again, just pick up some paint, make sure you're dashing off any excess. And what we're going to do is always start from the middle. So I'm starting from the middle of my leaf at my stem and I'm just sort of flicking the brush outwards. And it creates these sort of palm-like leaves effects. Can't say it. And it's quite nice because the bristles of the brush should separate and actually do most of the work for you. So you can sort of get them in there, the skeleton of the leaf. And what I would do is do this all the way around and then you can go back in and thicken them out slightly if you want to. And because this is sort of like a poster style, it is quite nice to be a little bit separate and graphic if you want to with your painting style, or we can go back in and make them look a little bit more fluffy. All we're going to do for the next one is exactly the same thing. So just curving it around with the stem. The great thing about palm leaves is they do go out in different directions, but essentially we're just following where gravity would naturally pull them. So this one that's really curved down, the leaves would naturally curve down with it. Once you've got that in there, I'm now just going to bring each leaf down slightly and fill it in a little bit more. Once you're happy with your first palm tree, you can then go ahead and add the next palm tree in exactly the same way. You might want to make this one a bit shorter, a bit taller, but exactly the same formula, starting with the trunk just drawing in the stem of all of the leaves and then going in with the actual leaves. Remember, you can add in as many palm trees as you like, but as soon as you think you're finished, you have completed your painting. Yay! I hope you enjoyed painting this and if you have any requests for other paintings you want us to do then just write in and let us know. See you soon guys, bye!